What's up guys? I'm kind of sick of sitting in this room, so today's vlog might be a little bit different. Actually will be a little bit different. I'm gonna ride around. And like I told you guys, I've been developing, trying to develop a cannabis collective. Hit me up if you're interested. But we're developing a website for this. And I'm gonna kind of ride around on my bike, try to find some places to kind of get some inspiration for some, for some stuff that we're developing. Look what Nicole got me. Look. Pete has my name engraved in it and shit. That's that, uh, you see that G-A-P? That's that special shit. That's that shit women think about that men don't too. Often at least. <clears throat> People in 2021, they get really upset about even slight generalizations. So I don't want any men on this channel to be like, I think about the heartfelt touches too. I think about him. GP's a bigot. He doesn't believe that men can get their women in grave notebooks. Alright, nigga. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, I feel like if something's not going right, I just need to change my location up a little bit and some good can come from it. So right now, I'm sipping on this tea. Uh, trying to sip on a little bit of water to get... More, I need to sip on more water, get hydrated so I can bike because this whole like little adventure day will be done via bike or via kicking rocks. So with that being said, I need to make sure that I'm decently hydrated, got a little bit of energy, got a little bit of smoke, but I will also be, um, I don't know which one yet, but I'm gonna be vaping one of our legally lifted carts just because it's easier to take on the go. You know what I mean? Easier to slip on your slip in your pocket, no smell. This I'd be stinking up the street. You know what I mean? If I got rocket fuel or something like that on the street. But guys, I appreciate you joining me for another GP's free game. I'm gonna go look around the city for some motivation. See what I find. So <laughs> If you guys want to see a kid ride around smoking Delta 8 on his bike. I'm not a kid. Young man ride around on his bike vaping Delta 8. Trying to get motivated. Stay tuned. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Today I was all sweaty and stuff and I didn't really feel like getting on camera. Um, as you can kind of see from this video that you're seeing now, I, w I just went biking. I just went cycling around the city. Um, I'm actually currently in Houston. And as I kind of talked about in the introduction today, I was really biking, looking for some, looking for some inspiration, really. Um, a lot of times what I do is I bike or run or any physical activity really just go out not really knowing where I'm going just looking to encounter something you know and sometimes even that something is just in my head it's nothing outside it's just changing my location it's just getting my heart racing getting some exercise and just seeing kind of what the world and my mind has to offer. I don't know how many of you guys listening to this currently um, like to bike, like to cycle, like to do anything like that, but it is one of those things that you always see the world in a different, a completely different type of perspective, you know? I, I do wish that I had a different bike. I have a one-speed bike, so I can't really get crazy cardio out of it. Like in this um, 14 and a half miles that I ride here, um, I never was really breathing hard or anything like that. Not to say that my legs never got tired or anything like that, but I mean, if you watch this full video, you would see that I never drink any water. And that's not a good thing. That's not anything that I would promote, um, but it's literally because it's not really enough of an exercise. Most of he like mostly here, you will see me going like 13 to 15 miles an hour um, over the course of the 15 miles and that's just not a, a cardio activity for me um, but I like to think of this time as kind of a time to think 
you know I, I am obviously paying attention to the street because I am riding through Houston and most of these drivers do want to kill me but um, as I ride around and as I occasionally hit my um, today I had granddaddy perp yeah, and I have it here also in studio with me um, I'm rolling up a little bit of rocket fuel along with this granddaddy perp and still just looking for that creativity today's a Monday today's a day um, that I kind of like to direct myself on how I want my week to go. And today, after I got up, this is what I was feeling like. I knew I wanted to exercise today. I didn't know if I wanted to get into the gym, and I still may end up going later. Um, but for now, this will do while I um, kind of record this audio here. And while I then record with Sergio after that, and then edit do all the work that I need to do. Excuse me while I just this while I roll up right quick. I know there are a lot of people out there that don't really like doing stuff without a purpose or without a place to go. You know, but I think that That's because that's how we've trained our minds over the course of our lives. I think in school, um, get this homework assignment done, um, go to this practice, get ready for bed, get up, get at school this time. Like everything has a certain time, you know. Sometimes when I like to exercise, I don't want to have any time constraints. Or maybe I have time constraints, but I don't want to even have any like direction constraints, if you will. I don't want anybody... Telling me where I have to go, where I can't go. Um, As you would see on this, like sometimes on the bike, I'll just stop and start and and go a whole new direction. Because it it doesn't really matter. Creativity is kind of something that's ever flowing. And that's how I feel about these type of bike rides. Um, I can just keep going. Um, I didn't really have a distance or time in mind. I just knew that there was some stuff I wanted to brainstorm, some stuff I wanted to think about. And like I showed you before, I did have I did have my notebook before just in case I wanted to stop and write some stuff down, but I never did. I don't th- I, the only stopping I did was really for lights and cars and shit in the street, rocks in the street, stuff like that. I was even hitting the legally lifted car out as I was riding. The way I see creativity is Creativity is the artist's responsibility, you know? It is something that comes to us, and it is something that's always fleeting. But at the same time, if you study yourself, and you study your own mind, and you study how you operate in your own life, and what makes you most creative, what blocks your creativity, what allows you to be productive, what halts you from being productive, there's a lot of value in that. And I have found that exercise and getting outside and things like that are something that always boosts my creativity. And I would argue that probably getting outside boosts everybody's creativity and probably exercise as well. Just getting to um, change your mind state, getting to alter um, your surroundings, just getting outside in the sun, I'm sweating a little bit. All these are human functions that I think are healthy and therefore boost creativity. Or the title of this video more than likely has something to do with like Delta 8 and creativity because I was brainstorming on Delta 8 kind of as I was riding my bike and and how I feel about cannabis and creativity in general is I think they're decently intertwined but at the same time I don't think you need any type of cannabis product to be creative am I often creative while using cannabis yeah or while using marijuana of any form, yes. Um, but it is, it's not necessary. I've gone times without marijuana as well. And was also very, very creative. And in some ways more creative. Um, because when I don't smoke, a lot of times my mind is a lot more bored. And so because my brain is more bored, I, I feel that with more work and more things that allow me to be creative. I, 
I reach out to more people. I get, I, I leave solitude and I reach out to more people to kind of collaborate with more people that allow, and that'll allow me to, to also be creative, you know, because there is the, the solitary creation and then there's the collaborative creation. And I think both are, both are very important. As a creative myself, as I was just talking about, um, over the course of my really young life at this point, <coughs> I've been trying to figure out, actually scratch that. It's kind of some bullshit. My whole life, I haven't been trying to figure out how, how I, I could be creative. Um, and I didn't look at creativity as something that's transferable to anything. I thought of artists and singers and rappers as creators, but everybody's a creator, you know? So when I was back on the football field um, and I was trying to figure out what are the best coverages to call my guys to do or to direct my guys to do because me and the other safety, we were the captains of the defense. Um, if I could have tapped into some areas of creativity, maybe I, I could have called a few of those things better. Maybe I could have identified a few of those things better. You know what I mean? So everything, creativity can help a lot of things. So with that being said, um, I really didn't tap into figuring out how being creative or how I could be creative until I realized I was a form of an artist or some type of artist, you know, and that sounds, I don't know how that sounds. It sounds weird to me to call myself an artist because I don't really feel that so way about myself and I do create art I do believe videos are art I do believe even podcasts and the audio form of things is art but at the same time it's not it's not the the prototypical what people are usually thinking of as art you know but that doesn't mean that it's not art So as I was riding around, smoking a little bit today, vaping, if you will, trying to tap into <coughs> that creative mindset I was in, I was just thinking. I, I usually really allow my mind to think. Today I was playing some Raphael Sadiq for the first half of the ride. And that was, that's the kind of vibe I usually go for when I'm exercising, that kind of R&B um, chill vibe, you know, that's kind of what helps stimulate my creativity. So as I was jamming that Raphael Sadiq, I was kind of just thinking about what I can do day to day to improve um, some of, and be more creative about some of the processes with CBD Hemp Library, with my personal channel. Um, some of the processes with my personal life and my finances, things like that, and how to be creative to get those things done, you know, to get the, to be better at those things, to be more efficient at those things. See, I like to multitask, you know, I mean, I'm already smoking Delta 8, biking, listening to music, but also all during all that, I like to take this time to think. Um, especially a lot of times, I mean, I live here with my girlfriend here. We spend a lot of time together, you know, and I don't have a car. So with a lot of this time being spent together, um, sometimes it's not as much time just in my own head, you know, and a lot of the creator and a lot of the entrepreneur time has to be spent in their own head kind of thinking or collaborating in a constructive way with somebody else that is thinking in the exact, not in the exact same way they are, but in the exact same train of thought, if you will, or the exact same um, direction. I'm not, I'm not saying that you can't talk to anybody that disagrees with you, but what I am saying is that there's some times that people who don't have the exact same or the, the type of understanding that you have and the kind of creative process that you have 
at in that time or in that moment, they're not the most appropriate person for you to be interacting with. And that could be your significant other. That could be anybody. You know, that could be your own mom. That could be your brother. That could be your sister. That could be, that could be anybody. But for me, a lot of times, with all that being said, if I want to be creative or if I want to get another state of mind, I have to at least have a little bit of time alone. Like this whole ride was really a total of like an hour, I think my Strava said. Add me on Strava, by the way. If you've gotten this far and you do physical activity, you might as well, you may as well add me on Strava. I think it's at who is GPAD. Strava, by the way. But also as I was biking, I was thinking about the idea I was really like enthralled with today, if you will, was how fleeting creativity is. I like I haven't even showered yet after this bike ride because I wanted to have the ideas fresh in my mind about what I was thinking about while I still have my adrenaline, while I still have my energy, before I calmed down, before um, I changed up, before I smoked too much, before I before Sergio came up, before anything happened, I wanted to make sure that I had a clear mindset or a clear state of mind about what I had experienced during the bike ride and what I had thought about during the bike ride. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a shrooms trip, if you will. You know, a lot of times on um, the shrooms trip, you you get some immediate mental gratification, if you will, about some clarity, some clarity of mind. But at the same time, sometimes some thoughts kind of creep into or build over themselves over the next few days. I mean, it can go either way, but I think both thoughts are valuable. I think the thoughts I have as soon as I get off the bike are just as valuable as the thoughts I have a couple days later um, after I've had some time to kind of digest those thoughts. You know, so um, being a creative is, it's an interesting journey. And it's an interesting journey because, here, let me backtrack a little bit. So I've been working, I've been going to school my whole entire life up until I was like 22. And then 21, most of that year, I worked 40 hours a week and then Coming back now um, after college, so for the last like year and a half, I had been working a lot for other people and stuff like that and realizing I was unhappy doing that. And I knew I was going to be unhappy doing that, but I had a professor who, who kind of taught me the right way to get a job working for somebody else. And I'll, I'll talk about that in another episode if, if anybody really comments below because I, I have a lot to say about that on, on the right job to choose because for entrepreneurs and creatives, there are correct jobs to choose and wrong jobs to choose. And, and I'm not a, an expert on that, but I do know a decent amount because um, I am a full-time creative that is um, having YouTube pay for my whole entire life. So there's something to be said for that. Um, to where I can offer some insight into how you can make that happen. And I did it in about, about one year. But with that being said, being a creative is also a responsibility. When I wake up in the morning, um, I want to create videos. I want to do a lot of things. But, I mean, as you see in the videos, I mean, I'm a smoker. Sometimes I can just smoke and just binge watch shit too i'm a i'm a human i am uh a workaholic in some sense i am always thinking about money and and increasing my family's net worth and my net worth that it, those are thoughts that are like constantly in my head but at the same time um i'm not really taken over by that you know because if I really wanted to make more money, there are ways that I could get a job and make more money. But I can kind of, not that I have insight into the future or anything like that, but I have insight to how other people have done it, things that I want to do. Um, and I've seen how people that I want to be like have lived. And... I see the steps they took to get where they were, and they weren't the conventional steps that a lot of people will tell you to take. Uh, 
for example, if you wanted to be an actor like Chris Rock or a comedian like Chris Rock, is it better to listen to your teacher about the chances about about the chances of becoming Chris Rock one in the steps to becoming Chris Rock? Or is it better to every waking moment study what Chris Rock did to get where he's at? I choose B. And as a creative, you have to stop listening to non-creatives about how to conduct your creative process. You have to stop listening to non-creatives about how to conduct your creative process. They're not creative. Everybody is creative. So I take that back a little bit. People are, everybody's creative, but your type of creative, you know? Not everybody's gonna understand it. Not everybody sees what you see. The world is different from everybody's view and that's a big reason why I can't even put me biking in this video like this because this is like my day-to-day -day view. This is how I see the world. You know, some of the views are, some of the video parts are a little bit bad because it's too low, but that's really how, that's how I see the world, you know? I see it on this bike going 13 to 15 miles per hour. About to get hit by cars. Vaping Delta 8, listening to Tichos and brainstorming. Who I am and, and what I want to do. <clears throat> this is just kind of how I um, break down life. This is how I digest life. This is how I... Uh, just understand and intake the things around me. And there's some people that'll understand it, and there's some people that won't understand it, and there's some people that will accept me, won't understand it and accept me for it, and there's some people that won't understand it and won't accept me for it, and I am okay with all of those options. There's some people that just simply won't accept it and won't accept me for it, you know? Or won't understand what I do and won't accept me for it. And that, I'm okay with, like, like I said, all those options. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I kind of bike and, and think through think through what what I'm doing day to day, you know, and the type of art I want to create, the type of people I want to collaborate with. Like I feel like as an artist, um, as an artist, I live in the now <clears throat> because, like I said. I make art whenever I feel like it. Like <coughs> sometimes I'm sure it's pretty annoying. Like I um I just get up and, and just go make a video. You know, I don't really account for to be honest, I don't really account for what other people are doing. Like right now I still haven't checked my phone. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I hope I'm not supposed to be meeting with anybody. I'm not supposed to be meeting with anybody. You need to talk to one person, but in my creative process, I'm pretty stringent. And that's another thing about being a creative is you have to be stringent and, and disciplined and, and kind of an asshole in some ways, you know? There are just some things I won't accept. And, and it's not even... It's 
not even about accepting or not accepting in terms of like okay like being interrupted you know i feel like sometimes nicole thinks i'm upset because i get interrupted in the video i don't care a lot of times interruption makes for good content you know the other day one time i got interrupted and i got this uh baby yoda sitting on my i didn't get interrupted but it was an interruption in the filming um and another time i got interrupted and i found out my po boy uh was about to be fucked up and that was a whole nother thing like they but there's funny things in there you know that's kind of what makes for the content I make is the authenticity within it. Because there's a lot of things that, that there's a lot of things that I feel like I could fake or try to make up and and really try to make my life seem like it's different than somebody else's. Because with my editing skills, my Photoshop skills, and the insight I have into how. A lot of rich people live and especially just because even if you're looking at this video um you can see some of the homes that we live around and stuff like that to where people are living like high life but you could make it easily seem like that's the life i can make it easily seem like that's the life i'm living anybody else can make it seem like that's the life they're living but i just want to be realistic with you guys that i'm living a life that's just like Kind of bare bones, you know, just the shit I need. Definitely some stuff I want. And just the stuff I want to do day to day. It's kind of what I do. And there's starting to definitely increasingly be more and more stuff I do day to day that I don't necessarily, necessarily want to do. But everything that I do that I don't want to do is in an attempt to just be able to do more shit that I want to do. But I have to be careful with that because a lot of times what I want to do is just sit around, chill, and smoke, you know, and I can't do that all the time. And with a channel where you make videos and uh, you just talk to people and stuff like that, then maybe you can just make, you know, I mean, maybe I can just sit and smoke, but still I have bigger plans and, and I think I have a, a bigger purpose than to just sit and smoke, you know. I, I like to smoke and there's nothing wrong with people. That do like to chill and smoke in their off time or anything like that. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but what I am saying is there's time for that and there's time to go to move around. Even I'm um, using this video, like this is my smoke session right now. Um and I'm talking to you guys. And then I'll go edit this video and then and then I'll move on and see what's next for the day. So another thing I would suggest or more free game for you guys is figure out how to work your creativity or your art into your day. If it's something you already do, like if it's a commute, I've seen a lot of YouTubers will film their commute, like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> but they'll put it in their car and their dash or whatever, talk into it and stuff like that. And I've done that on long road trips too. And it makes sense. Simple. It's just a way. <coughs> just a way to not waste time, you know. I do want to take this time to thank everybody for tuning into the channel. Um, I know I do make some different content and it's not consistent. They say a better way to grow on YouTube is to make consistent content. So YouTube knows what you're talking about and so your fans know what to come to expect or whatever. And I hate the word fans, but your viewers come to ex expect or whatever. But I kind of just want to make the content I want to make. So I appreciate you people that do like it. The first person who gets this far in the video, I'm I I like to do this. I'm genuinely curious. We, if you're 21 years old, I will give you five free 50 milligram 
Delta 8 Legally Lifted, our brand edibles, our mixed berry flavor. If somebody within the next week makes it this far in the video, I think this should probably be like 20 something minutes into the video. If you DM at who is GPAT and say, I made it this far. I will mail you five free edibles. That's just my way of saying I appreciate it. And all the in a lot of these videos, I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm gonna keep doing giveaways. For the people who really stick around and watch the content and really cheer with me, you know. Thank you guys for coming and listening to me. So guys, please, after this, comment below, um, or during this video, comment below ways in which you kind of get inspired to be creative, whether it's smoking, whether it's exercising, whether it's talking to people, whether it's something else, there's plenty of ways. If I get enough responses in the comments, I'll do a video reacting to those comments. Or just kind of highlighting them, putting it on the screen. Because I'm curious about what you guys think about creativity. And whether Delta 8 raised your creativity. Whether Delta 9 raised your creativity. Whether CBD raised your creativity. Whether being completely sober, you are as creative as possible. What, what helps you out, you know? Being a creative is, <clears throat> it's hard work and it's hard to learn how to balance um, turning off, trying to create for others, you know, and either creating for yourself or just kind of just chilling by yourself and not creating, you know, using that time, using that time that you have to yourself to better yourself and not think about creating things is also something that needs to be given thought to. Because not everything needs to be broadcast to the world. And not everything is one good, one productive, but at the same time, all that's subjective. So it's kind of for everybody to realize in their own life what's worth it to document, what's worth it to show, what's worth it to share. I thought this video was worth it to share because um, I think thinking about getting your brain in the creative space is an important thought process. I think it's something that's not taught about talked about a lot um, I, I think in school a lot of times we were taught how to best study how to best focus on studying how to best focus on school I was taught to, to zone in in sports and how to focus during a game and things like that no one ever taught you to focus on being creative even in art class My art class was still, I only took the beginner one, but my middle school art class and um, in private school, they did focus a lot more on the creative aspect, but I was young and ignorant to probably not appreciate it as much as, as appreciate the time that creativity was given as much as I should have. But as I grow older, I realized the time that it takes to foster creativity. And a lot of that time needs to be spent alone. A lot of that time needs to be spent around other creatives. A lot of that time needs to be understood by you and everyone around you as being time that is sacred, if you will, to create and to, and, and then there's time that you can create that's not even sacred. That's just, you know, that's just for everybody. You know, a lot of times, People in the filming process, they'll 
they don't mind other p- people in that process or whatever but in post they want to be alone and some people they want help in the post process but in the filming process they kind of want to take the lead like everybody has their own style and doing it more and more is how you figure out that style but like for me I think I'd rather be more in the post part of things than in the real filming part of things like the hand to hand camera thing you know I'd rather be in post production editing and stuff like that But at the same time, I like being in front of the camera more than all that because that shit's a lot of work. Being in front of the camera is just fun. (laughs) If you guys haven't biked around your city, I suggest it. You'll see some things in your city that you never thought were there. You'll see some things in your area that you never, you just never seen before. And as I go to new places, if we drive, like for CBD Hemp Library stuff, I actually really hope that I am able to bring a bike and bike around cities because I feel like it's really easier to see what a city is really like and what a culture is really like and what the people are really like by getting on the street and biking and stuff like that. Even like, for example, in Colorado, when I used to ride around in the streets there a lot more, and in San Antonio, when I ride around the streets there a lot more, the people were just friendlier. Like here, everybody's scared of everybody on the street. Like everybody in the streets a threat. All those places, it was like they were happy to see other people out. It's just those little minute cultural differences. But then when you go inside, everybody's friendly here. And the cars, actually people drive super aggressive here. But <laughs> like when you get out of your cars and you see people and stuff, it's friendly. But... It's strange. It's just like a strange disconnect between between uh, people on the street here in Houston. Because it's just fewer than, I feel like, other cities. Other cities, the streets are bustling. There's people walking here. Everybody driving. We gotta stay creative. Comment below how you stay creative. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in for another episode of GP's Free Game. See you guys next time. Peace.